các bạn mình đang ở sông sông Bắc Rai của Trang Si à, và hôm nay là ngày 31 tháng 10 năm 2017 và các bạn đang thấy cái quan cảnh rất là tuyệt vời cái sông Bà Đậu sông Bắc Rai của Chelsea đội W à. và các bạn đã làm mặt chứng kiến mình muốn quay để cho các bạn nhận được khung cảnh thực tế của trên sân vận động nó tuyệt vời như thế nào đó để cái thì còn đây mình khi đi ngoài cổng vào rất là đẹp các bạn và sân vận động người ta đầu đầu tư nói chung là quá hiện đại từ cái hệ thống vàng điện bên bên ngoài chút xíu mình sẽ quay cái đoạn bên ngoài để cho các bạn xem tự nhiên đây là một cái cảm giác rất là tuyệt vời và thấy là người ta làm bóng đá nó như một một cái doanh nghiệp người ta làm bài bản nó như thế này tại sao người ta đưa đến chúng ta những cái các cái dịch vụ và cái sự trải nghiệm rất là tuyệt vời mình đi trên một cái đoàn trắng các bạn ở đây là những cái người mà rất là đam mê bóng đá đam mê đam mê Ok guys, if you'd like to come and take a seat over here for me please mình ngồi xuống đây để các bạn uh, uh, okay, so welcome to Stanford Bridge. Nhé. As I said before, my name is Kyle. I'll be showing you around this afternoon. So we're starting here today in the north part of the stadium, the Matthew Harding stand. We'll then make our way over to the press room where the journalists interview the managers on a match day. Then we'll go into the changing room, so first of all the away team changing room, followed of course by the Chelsea changing room. Then we'll come down the tunnel to the side of the pitch, the dugout's just over there, and we'll finish up on the Nike swoosh on the other side of the stadium, for a lovely view of the pitch from above. So first thing first, we have any Chelsea fans here today? Put your hands up if you Chelsea. Okay, so a few hands, not too many in there. Anyone support any other teams? Any different teams? Yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal, good start. <laughs> Any others? Man United. Man United, getting better. <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> Manchester United. We got the Manchester United fan club. Here. Bucharest That's star. Right. Stay with Bucharest. Yeah, he's part of Constanza. No, no. <laughs> so you got you guys in from Romania? Yeah. Are you? Is it just you? Muto. Any other um, clubs? Any other from anywhere around the world? Denmark. Denmark? Are you from Denmark? Yeah. Okay. Anyone from any other countries in Europe? We've got Romania down here. Any other countries? Poland. Poland? Yeah. Are you guys all together? Yeah. Brilliant. Welcome, guys. States, and you sir, I don't believe we've spoken to you. Uh, uh, what you country? Uh, Vietnam. 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 Vietnam, yes. Okay. Wow. Hanoi. Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh. So welcome, where are you guys from? <coughs> Korea. Okay. Just had a private group from Korea, so welcome. Any other countries? I think that's just about everyone. Yeah. Well, wherever you're from, guys, you're all very welcome here at Stamford Bridge, even the Manchester United fans. <laughs> so guys, does anyone have any questions before we head over to the press room? Yeah. Why say Stamford Bridge? Stam Why is it called Stamford Bridge? Yeah. So there used to be a stream of water that used to run along this side of the stadium. And there was a bridge over the top of it. It was originally called Stamford Brook, yeah. a stream of water. And then the bridge over the top was called Stamford Bridge, but it was demolished to make way for the stadium when we built the stadium. So that's where the What name here? It used to be just next to where the railway line is now. There used to be a stream 
the water going along there. So that's and uh, when uh, built uh, the stadium? The stadium was built in 1877, oh, 40 years ago. When it first opened, it wasn't used for football, it was actually used for running, so for athletics. Yeah. So it's a very different stadium there. Yeah. It's been renovated several times, so we first came here. The biggest renovation was when we first came here um, in 1905. So 112 years ago. And then the stands have been built at different times in the past. So um, where we stood now was built in the mid 90s. So was the stand on the other side as well. This stand here, that almost bankrupt the club, was built in 1974. And then the last one to be built was opposite there, the Millennium side. So that was built in two th completed in 2001. So yes, yeah, so capacity at the moment 42,000. Yeah, so a little bit less than 42,000, 41,631 to be exact. So we will be increasing the capacity here, improving the facilities. What's going to be happening is, in two years time, approximately, we're going to go from 42,000 to 60,000 seats. Okay, to do this, we're going to demolish everything around the outside, including the hotels, the mega store, um, even the hub where you first came in. We're going to knock everything down, the stands around the outside, and then we're going to sink the pitch down four meters. Okay. So the pitch will go down four meters and we'll build three new tiers, three new stands around the outside. So it'll be a bit like the east stand just here, three tiers, and it'll be a bowl shaped stadium. Okay. Now for the first time in our history, while we're rebuilding for three seasons, we won't be able to play here at Stamford Bridge. Now the most likely scenario is for those three seasons, we're going to be playing at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, I'm sure you all know Wembley Stadium, the England National Football Stadium. Right Once Tottenham move out, yeah. We'll clean it properly. And then we'll come in. <coughs> Any other questions, guys? So he sits in the West End. So right up in the middle, where you can see the Chelsea and the Chelsea Club. Ah, so the fact. The fans, where is Aria? The noisiest Chelsea fans. Normally the, the Chelsea fans the ones yeah. that make the most noise are here. The yeah. Okay guys, we're going to make our way over to the press room now. So if you'd like to follow me this way, please. Yeah. 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 แล้วพี่น้องเอาไว้เพื่อเซตแต่ถ้าเกิดอาจจะเป็นเกิดโดนมันเป็นชุดมันก็ตกไปเสียแล้วแค่ไหนก็ทำอะไรกันเนี่
và chúng ta hầu như không được xem cách mà họ được xem bóng nó là cái gì hôm nay mình cũng tiếp nhà văn để biết được cái nội tình ở bên trong nó là cái gì sẽ quay vào cổng cho các bạn thấy bây giờ mình đang đi vào cái đường là bộ này bên trong nơi phòng an cái này là nhà à, cà phê và nơi này là nơi mà ngồi để được nghe thiết trình nơi là bóng ok guys so welcome to the press room so as I said this is where the journalists interview the managers on a match day. So, most match days the managers will come here twice, once before the game to present the team sheet AM, and then once after the game, for quite a bit longer, for about half an hour or so, um, for the post-match press conference. Okay, But this is mainly the journalist space on match day. So the journalists can be in here for anything up to six hours or so. So we like to treat them nicely, give them everything they could possibly need, the idea being If we treat them nicely, then hopefully they'll write nice things about Chelsea Football Club. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work, but we try our best anyway. So if you have a look around along the right-hand side, they've got a bit of a workspace. They can plug in their laptops, charge their phones, connect to the high-speed internet as well. At the side, at the back, two television screens, so they can keep up to date with all the scores around the Premier League, and also highlights of the game here at half-time and full-time as well. At the back of the room, we've also got an area for a hot and cold buffet, and it's steamed on European match days. So when we played um, Roma here, we had some Italian food. When we played Atletico Madrid, we'll have some Spanish food and so on. And when you can't have food, 
without drinks so long here we've got a complimentary bar for the journalists as well which unfortunately is closed at the moment <laughs> uh, just to the left hand side some of you will be able to see there's a white door which leads up to the press box that's where they'll be watching the match from but i'll show you that later on in the dugouts but for now have a look behind me you can see all of our sponsors up on the board there so lots of different sponsors all very important of course but the three main sponsors you've got carabao the administrative provider from thailand who sponsors the training round you've then got yokohama ties from japan who sponsors the home away and third kiss and finally a small company from the states you may have heard of nike Does anyone know? <laughs> just me so the deal with nike one of the biggest ever in football and chelsea history so 900 million pounds over 15 seasons so a huge deal indeed now on a match day we'll have three very important people connected to chelsea football club sat right here in the middle mr antonio conte did a great job last season winning the league in his first season in charge on this side club captain gary cahill and on this side man of the match whoever that may be on the day so the man of the match gives an interview just here then we'll join the others for questions for 30 minutes or so now when you come up have a look at the desk in the middle here. It's very worn, very old, and there's a reason we haven't replaced it. Not because we're too stingy to buy a new table, but because this one has sentimental value. So up until about 10 years ago, this is where the Chelsea players would have signed their contracts when they first joined the club. Okay, so in the recent past, you would have had people such as um, Frank Lampard, John Terry, Petr Cech, Didier Drogba, uh, Michael Balak, they would have all signed their contracts right here this very table okay but since then it's now done at our training ground in Cobham Surrey so just outside of London does anyone have any questions the mic, no? yep do you guys have um, like an external PR firm support you or is all comms done in house uh, it's all done in house now yeah. I think most Premier League clubs do it all in house now whereas yeah before they would have had external companies coming in, but now they prefer to keep it all tight yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, so just a few things for you now. So if anyone needs to use the loo now is the time. Otherwise, you've got two options. You can either get a photo with the green screen where you can have your picture superimposed with one of the Chelsea players. If you'd like that done, come and let me know. Otherwise, if you want to line up on the left-hand side and then come up and take a photo as the Chelsea manager, now is the time. Mm -hmm. So it's over to you guys. So who wants to go with you guys? <laughs> so guys if you want to come up and take a photo up here if you want to line up on the left hand side and then come up just a few at a time so barely remember so two <laughs> of the best players in the world who have never scored a goal past us here at Stamford Bridge okay. so guys I suggest we get out of this room and go and have a look at a slightly nicer changing room over the tunnel okay so if you want to follow me this way let's go have a look at the Chelsea changing room Hello, Cảm 
Ja. Each of the players has their own full size locker with their name on the plaque on the front and a shirt hanging on the outside as well. So, in terms of the order they sit at different clubs, do it in different ways. But here, with the exception of the goalkeepers, Conor Mills have the goalkeepers together. Players normally sit in their language groups or culture groups, as I'm sure you notice. So, having a look around along this side, just here in this corner, we've got a bit of a Brazilian corner. So, three players will play for Brazil. Along this wall, we've got many French and Spanish speaking players. So, five players from Spain Pedro Fabregas, Marcus Monzo, Morata, and Aspilicoto as well. We've then got four French speaking players, so two from France, Pente and Bakioko, and then the two Belgians in the middle, Azan Bachway. And then over here, we have the Sonda Junior, who chose to sit next to Thibaut Courtois as well. Now, along this side, we have our English speaking corner. So we've got Gary Cagle, club captain, and a certain player who hasn't done too much with Chelsea yet, but does serve as a reminder to all the others to stay hydrated. And we've got a couple from the youth team as well. Now, around the rest of the room, we've got the toilets over there in the corner, nothing too exciting there. Behind me, the medical areas, so we've got six massage tables in here rather than the two in the away team changes. And then we've got things like creams, gels, bandages, tape, even ice. Talking of ice, on this side next to the showers, we have the ice bar. Okay. And then on the other side of this court, finally, we have a stretching area and also an interactive tactics court. And it's only a one that uses the players before matches. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? We sat here for about five minutes every match when it's not running up and down the touchline just here. Now, the other six seats along the front are for the doctors and for the coaching staff and the seven seats along the back on each side so just along here is where the Chelsea substitutes will be sitting now just behind that we've got a space for any injured players other coaching staff and suspended players as well hopefully we don't have too many of them but we didn't do too well with the yellow cards and red cards at the start of the season just behind that if you remember we were in the press room earlier on the journalists will then come up that staircase through that door and take their seats along the desk just there. We've then got some of the TV camera points along here where they'll be filming the images that you guys will be able to watch back home, pointing out obviously towards the pitch. So the pitch looks fantastic even a couple of months into the season. So it's about average size for a Premier League pitch, 103 by 67.5 meters. And it's a Deso pitch, which is the latest technology in pitches. So 97% real, 3% artificial. Okay, so the artificial part of this pitch, plastic fibers that go down about 20 centimeters connected to wire at the bottom. The real grass then grows through and they intertwine, making it extra strong, extra durable. So it looks as good at the start as it does at the end of the season. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, why do you not have a, a barrier for a, for a Storm or rain or a uh, roof. Yeah, or roof. Um, I don't think any of the the grounds in the Premier League have roofs at the moment. So yeah, it's better for the pitch as well if it's open. So the more sunlight. Off the east stand, guys, you can see we've got some black seats up at the top of the back. So this is where the TV commentators, radio commentators, will be sitting on a match day. Right up high, so they've got a nice overview. Going on around the stadium. Make a long way. 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 Make a and then we can put them all the way down in the corner. Some might say where they belong. I would never say such a thing. And then we can sell more tickets to the Chelsea fans, which is always good. Now for the cup competitions for the League Cup, we've run the Carabao Cup this season and the FA Cup. 
as well. The away teams, fans can have the whole of this stand. So the last team to do that were Manchester United. Where are Manchester United? The last team to do that, Manchester United, in the quarter-final of the FA Cup last season. So lots and lots of Manchester United fans all came here to watch their team lose 1-0. So it was a great day for Chelsea, not so much for Manchester United. <laughs> Finally, guys, if you have a look to the third level from the bottom of the West Stands, or second from the top of the back, where we said earlier on, above the word Chelsea, Chelsea Football Club, that's where our own of Roman and family sits. So this is the most expensive place you can sit. Um, you'll be, you won't be surprised to hear. So, you can rent one of these boxes up there with Roman, but it will cost you. Okay, it will cost you approximately £250,000 for a season. But you can't just rent them for one season, you have to rent them for a minimum of three seasons. So that's £750,000. So nearly close to a million euros, if you prefer. Any bias? ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้